everyone, good afternoon and welcome back to Gold Penguins Meet the Founder Podcast. I'm your host Wes and today joining me alongside is Paul, the founder of a tool called Recall. Paul mate, how are you doing? How are things? Hey Wes, uh, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm calling in from Amsterdam and I'm very happy to be here. Very nice. Are you from Amsterdam originally or, you know, sort of, what's the story there? No, I, I grew up in South Africa, uh, in Johannesburg. Um, after schooling, I went to university in Cape Town and worked in Cape Town for a couple of years and then made my way to, to Amsterdam with my partner, where I worked as a software developer for a while. Um, then the company I was working at sold and I ended up being a freelancer for a couple of years, which was a ideal scenario to get started on building my own projects. Cool. And with a background in software, you say, you know, sort of making the move. Was it just the job originally that prompted the move to Amsterdam or sort of what drew you to the, to the city? Uh, so it was actually my, my partner's job. She she worked for, for Uber uh, and she was relocating to, to the headquarters. And I uh, I jumped on, on board and uh, got myself a, a working visa with her. Not too shabby. Yeah. <laughs> do, you miss, do you miss home at all in South Africa? Uh, yeah, I definitely do miss the weather. Uh, in Amsterdam, like it's summer for uh, a couple of weeks at a time. Uh, and yeah, I also miss friends and family, but they're also really great things about uh, Amsterdam that I enjoy. All part of it, I think, you know, sort of traveling and living in a different city. I mean, I, I imagine you're in those few weeks of sunshine at the minute. You know, what, what sort of thing are you doing? Are you getting out and about as much as you can, you know, on your bike as a, a classic Dutchman now? Yeah, as much as I can, but uh, recall also keeps me pretty busy. Uh, my schedule, I generally try um, to take Saturday completely off uh, and then uh, Sunday to Friday, I, I work uh, full time on, on recall. And then like Saturday is just my like completely decompress yesterday. Uh, we recently bought uh, ra- race bikes, uh, me and my partner. Uh, so we went out uh, on, a, on a bit of a long cycle, which was really nice to just get out the city, get some fresh air. Okay, very cool. I'm, I'm excited to hear more about your tool, uh, Recall. So could you give us, just for the audience, a quick summary of what it is and sort of who might find it useful, if that's okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Recall is an AI-powered knowledge base uh, that allows you to save any online content, pretty much any web content, into your own personal knowledge base. So what it does is it, will sum- it's a, it works with a browser extension that will summarize the content It automatically categorizes the content and it will extract entities and connect them with other things you've saved in the past, in the past, helping you find connections in the things that you saved to it. Um, The type of people, so I originally built this tool for myself. Uh, I can get into that a bit more, a bit later, but um, the type of people that are currently using it, uh, we recently ran a survey to understand our cohorts better. And uh, the biggest cohorts are actually consultants uh, that are doing uh, research for cases, okay. uh, but then also a lot of students and uh, other various busy professionals just trying to like increase their productivity just using the mainly the summarization features. Very interesting. And obviously, you mentioned you built it for yourself originally. Can I hear a bit yeah. more about the backstory? So, you know, was it something like you, you thought, oh, I should be collating all this information, I'm taking too much on here, you know, was it from studies or where did it, where did it originally come from? So I was always, uh, like for many years, I was a big Evernote user and I like, it kind of became a habit where I'll just like collect information of like all the things that I'm interested in, like blog posts that I read and I'd use the web clipping tool to do that. But the issue that I had is I would like save all this content, I'd categorize it manually Mm-hmm. which would be quite tedious, and then I'd never really come back to it. Uh, so I had an idea from the company that I was working at. Uh, they used a, they heavily relied on graph databases, uh, and I had this idea of wouldn't it be really cool to turn all of this, all these notes into my own personal knowledge graph where I could like identify relationships and it would help resurface things that I've seen in the past when anything related comes comes up. So. That's basically, I merged the ideas of like a knowledge graph with a regular note-taking app like uh, Notion or Evernote. Mm -hmm. uh, And I came up with the idea for for Recall. Very nice. And obviously, you you brushed over the the use cases and the cohort as it stands. How many monthly users are are using Recall at the moment? Uh, So our peak after our product hunt launch was, I think, uh, it was about 1,700 or so Mm. uh, weekly active users. 
And how long ago was the Product Hunt launch? And was that you sort of the, the actual launch of the tool itself or did you launch on Product Hunt a little bit later? So, no, we, we released, so, so the product's gone through quite a few different iterations. Um, the, the, the first time it turned from a side project, like being a hobby project to being mm -hmm. actually something real was yeah. last year, November, where I launched on, on Hacker News. It, uh, trended on as like the number one post on like cool. show HN, okay. uh, which was actually a complete shock to me. <laughs> uh, and that actually like, res cause it was a side project at that time. And then that actually led to a bunch of VCs reaching out, which I was not expecting. And, um, yeah. I got a, like a, a pre-seed round closed mm -hmm. like remarkably quickly. Um, and then that's when I, I, I quit like w with my freelancing clients um, and I, I went all in. I got a co-founder uh, and we worked yeah full time together until April. We did a, another product hunt launch. Uh, and basically since then, uh, we've just been iterating, growing, speaking to users and trying to figure out um, like what are the best features that we should be building uh, to solve problems for our users. And that's kind of, that's kind of where we are today. In terms of the iterations you've done so far, and you mentioned obviously the forms and hearing feedback from people actually using the tool, what sort of updates and features have you added that, uh, you know, been mirrored in the exact sort of requirements and, you know, users asking for them? So the one thing that we have just released, we did a quiet release for it. So it's not like officially out. We're actually going to do another product hunt launch for it, mm -hmm. but it's a, 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 a space repetition tool to help you resurface content from your, your, your past. So this was like from our, one of our biggest cohorts, which, which was students. Um, we wanted, we spoke to them. A lot of people use uh, Readwise to, for doing this for their, um, their highlights in in, in the eBooks that they read. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had an idea that we can do a similar type of thing uh, with any content that you save. So YouTube videos, podcasts, or whatever you save have a spaced repetition schedule mm -hmm. to resurface content from the past. And you have options to say how well you remember it. And then we also added on top of that to reinforce your learning on content, um, GPT generated uh, questions that you can quiz okay. yourself on things that you've saved. So like as you go through your, your space rep repetition review cards, uh, you can generate uh, questions to quiz yourself on the contents of, of your knowledge base. It's a cool idea, definitely. Um, in terms of the pricing so far, obviously you've got uh, Recall Lite as well as Recall Plus. Could you walk us through the difference between this free and paid version and sort of a bit about the thought process behind the decision? Yeah, so yeah, it's a freemium, um, freemium model. The idea was to to allow people to 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 try it out for free uh, yeah. to get an idea, get an understanding, because that's uh, the best way to to explain the tool is to let let users try it out for themselves. Uh, and if users w find it valuable, then they can upgrade to plus. Uh, the limitations in the free version is just on the number of uh, cards that you can save. Uh, so basically, knowledge cards is what we call them, which yeah. is, is the summary and all the connections uh, and the categorization. Uh, so the number of those that you can save um, and as well as the, the number of them that you can generate from the, the, the extension. Um, so, yeah, there's limitations in the free version and then in the plus version, you can do it as much as you want. Can I ask what the split between people you're seeing upgrade to the premium version is? And has, has that sort of percentage changed over time since you launched? Yeah, so we only launched uh, pricing in the last product hunt launch so in, in around April. Okay. And yeah, from all of our signups, the conversion is about uh, 5%. Okay. So sign up to, to paid conversion. Yeah. And obviously, launching with the, the pricing in April, um, how did it sort of you know turn out in your brain when you, when you first, again, upload to Hacker News? Did you expect it to be this big thing it is now? And you know, at what point did you sit there thinking, you know, I can, I can quit my freelance clients and this could be a full-time thing for me? Was there some like, sort of big revelation in that sense where it was one moment you thought, you know, this could work? Uh, well, yeah, it was actually quite um, quite a big sh surprise for the, the, the Hacker News launch. Uh, so that's the one last year in, in November. Mm -hmm. I was actually on the fence about whether I should continue with it. And that was kind of the, the sentiment of the Hacker News post. And it just resonated with people. And like a lot of people, I don't know, got, were interested in it. And that it was a huge shock to me. I was very, very, very surprised and very happy about it and then um that gave a lot more confidence and motivation to like uh 
push forward. Yeah. And then we're also very happy with our uh, product hunt launch in, in April. Uh, we came, we didn't come first, we came second, uh, which is also, it's not bad, uh, but we were very happy with the, the conversion that we got uh, to, to, to paid. Nice, and it's obviously clearly paying off for you at the moment too, you know, sort of a bit of, bit of growth for the future. In terms of, I don't know, let's say since November then, have you had any sort of big problems that um, Recall's faced as, as a tool or, you know, around the team um, that you've had to sort of overcome since then? Yeah, I'd say the biggest problem is like we both technical co-founders. Uh, so like our solution to everything is build a feature. Okay. But in reality, <laughs> like a startup also needs marketing and like business strategy and those things. Um, so the biggest, um, yeah, the biggest hurdle is probably like getting acquainted with like marketing and seo and like doing blog posts and and that type of thing like mm -hmm. being a developer i'm a bit more of an introvert and i prefer just like sitting and coding yeah. uh, so i kind of have to get out of my my comfort zone to to do those things and and marketing like i definitely didn't have enough respect for marketing people uh it's 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 it hasn't been hasn't been easy but we're slowly um getting some um like i'd say call them growth hacks uh, that are converting quite nicely. Okay. In terms of, obviously, you mentioned the team then. If there's, for example, a company by further funding or, you know, if your revenue increases month on month quite a bit, if you're going to look to hire more people for the team, will they be mostly technical-based roles or do you think you'll bring on someone, I don't know, for a, a full-time sort of marketing role to help, you know, that growth and promotion for the tool? Yeah, I think if we had to bring on someone new, it would definitely be someone uh, who has more marketing skills. Mm -hmm. uh, like, we definitely have the... Uh, technical, <laughs> the technical part under control. Uh, and in terms, in terms of features, like we have, like we definitely have a, we have very ambitious features for the future. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we got to the point where we like, okay, we have a product. It's work. It's working for people. We need to sell this before we carry on working on features. So we'll definitely go for hiring someone who's got a lot of uh, marketing experience. Yeah, balance it out a, a tiny bit. In terms of, obviously, you mentioned about the future features. Are there any sort of in the pipe works we could hear about today? Some sort of sneak peeks into some updates or future additions that you could expect to see on Recall? Yeah, so there's the one thing I already mentioned, the space repetition. So that's actually live today. We haven't done any marketing cool. for it. We did kind of like a, a, a silent release um, yeah. to get, like, so people who stumble across it uh, get to see it and we can um, see if there are any issues uh, with it, um, but we do plan to do uh, a product hunt launch for it and do a whole media and press uh, release and try to get some some buzz around it. Um, so we're going to be doing that uh, probably towards the end of August. Yeah. Uh, and then we also have uh, mobile apps because uh, that's one of the biggest requests from our users is they want a better mobile experience. Uh, so we've built um, React Native apps, uh, which are also pretty much ready to go. Uh, so we'll do that a couple of weeks after the product hunt launch for the space repetition feature. And then longer term, like we have, uh, we have quite uh, some, like I said, ambitious features, uh, mm -hmm. but they kind of, um, they're not well defined yet. Uh, so we, we need to understand our, our, our users better before we, we make any announcements about those. Okay. And following on to that in sort of more of a general sense, where do you see Recall as a product as well as the team surrounding it? Where do you see both being in, I don't know, let's say five years time? You know, have you got quite ambitious plans for the trajectory as a whole? Yeah, for sure. Like I don't really think in like five year plan too much, um, but we definitely want to be like, we definitely have very ambitious uh, plans. Like we want to hire uh, and grow really fast or yeah, and grow. Um, but uh, five years, like, that's what we want. Uh, but I'm kind of focusing on, like, the next six months for now. Our biggest focus now is, like, to, to understand, um, understand our cohorts. Because at the moment, like, it's such a general tool. We have so many different people using it for so many different things, mm -hmm. which makes marketing very difficult. No, and can... from, from all the blog posts I've read on marketing, like, I now know you need to, know, uh, you need to be able to identify your 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 best users and 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 then you can target them with ads and things so so that's what we're really focused on uh for the next uh couple months 
It's always been interesting to see sort of the journey that a, a more technical minded, I don't know if you had like a degree in CS, for example, you know, starting your own tool and building your own business. And you, this entire world of marketing and promotion and, and sort of everything to do with business can be completely new to people. So, you know, you have the product there, but in, when it comes to selling it, you know, you have to learn, you have to upskill yourself all about it, for example. So it's interesting to see sort of hear the different journeys and how people do it around it. You said you mentioned blogs then, obviously. How else are you sort of, you know, taking on new, new information to, to learn more about the, the marketing side of things and, and that? Yeah, so there's been, like, we've, we've tried ads, uh, but then we decided we don't want to do ads until we understand our users better because, like, we don't know who to target and then you just end up spending, like, a lot on, on yeah. Google ads. Uh, but, the, but the thing that's actually, uh, so then another thing that we worked on, which actually I thought was a really cool idea and it worked very well, uh, was uh, a Twitter bot which um, followed big media outlets, and mm -hmm. as soon as they released a news article or, um, or or like if it was a YouTuber, they released a new YouTube video or whatever it is, we would be the first one to post a comment. And what the comment would be is we would generate our knowledge card, so the quick summary of whatever that content was, with all of the entities extracted and like in a nice little infographic card, and would post that as a comment. Okay. Um, and that got like a lot of traffic and it also would have a link to um, like save that to your recall uh, nice. and it would open a, a, like an anonymous uh, recall um, instance uh, where it would have a big banner asking them to sign up. The problem with that was, uh, yeah, Twitter doesn't like um, that type of activity. So we got shadow banned and we keep getting shadow banned. Um, so I've tried various, various iterations of that idea. Uh -huh. um, but so that's kind of like parked for now. But the thing that I've just started about two weeks ago is posting um, kind of the same, a similar type of thing, but in video format uh, with like explaining um, articles on Reddit uh, yeah. and those on certain subreddits are doing really well. well I can imagine it's, it's very interesting sort of method. I've never really heard of that before either. Um, obviously, it's quite a, a niche tool in that sense, but it's, it's an interesting avenue to explore for marketing, definitely. The first one that did really well because I was like uh, going through a lot of like YC content, the Y Combinator content. So okay. I'm like, okay, let me create a summary of the Y Combinator video uh, and I'll create a recording where it reads out the summary. So I do text to speech uh, uh, readouts and then in the background, it's a video of me generating uh, the, generating it and then I put a watermark of recall and I posted on the Y Combinator subreddit okay. and it got, a, it got a decent amount of, of impressions and like, the, the moderator reached out to me and they're like, usually we're not, you're not allowed to do self-promotion, but because yeah. it's like YC content and they think it's a, like a very creative marketing uh -huh. strategy, they're like, yeah, we'll let it pass. No fair play. I mentioned before the, the call that the, the purpose of these interviews is basically to A, you know, shine some the spotlight on your tool and we can learn a bit more about you as a founder and your journey behind it. But also um, for people sort of trying to build their own thing you know, on a similar level, if it's the sort of same sort of category to see the exact steps that someone like yourself has gone through and, you know, what sort of problems they faced and how they did things, basically. Because, you know, if it, in real terms, you're much closer to someone just starting out than someone that's, you know, 20 years into their entrepreneurial journey. So, you know, the advice and insight you can give is often quite um, sort of much more relevant to someone just sort of new to the world. So in that case, um, if you had someone in front of you in the call with us today that's got a good idea for a, a tech tool or a SaaS tool, um, but they're looking for some advice and guidance to get from, you know, that initial launch or, you know, a few phases of launches yourself um, to, to find that user base and to start, you know, iterating and growing. What would you say to them? It's quite a cliche, but I, I think it's a cliche for a reason. It's mm -hmm. like definitely build the smallest possible uh, thing that you can build to, to solve a very specific problem. Mm -hmm. And then show it to the the people that it it, it serves uh, uh, like as a solution for, uh, and then talk to them about it. Like definitely don't go out and spend like six months building a polished app and then launch it on Product Hunt because, <laughs> like more often than not, you end up like very very disappointed. Yeah. Uh, so keep your iteration cycle super small uh, and tr don't try to solve multiple things. Like try solve one specific problem first and i definitely um fall into this trap of um trying to build like a lot of different features before launching but uh, like it was a mistake it's better to just like launch very basic things uh, and get feedback from the beginning 
And in terms of talking to people and getting that feedback in real terms, what's the best way to go about that? Um, so the first thing I tried was just surveys, uh, but people don't respond to surveys. The, the best way is to in person with people that like you don't you don't have to know them, but in person in real life. And like you you sit over their shoulder and like you ask them to use the tool. And like that's that's the best way. Like it's a bit awkward and like uncomfortable for them. <laughs> but uh, um, like it's 100 percent so much better than like some random person that you're not communicating with that's just filling in a form. Mm -hmm. um, because you, you notice so many things about like their flow and like what they, what they don't understand and what they do understand. And then don't let them ask, well, they can ask questions, but you don't answer their questions because people will be like, how do I do this? And you just sit and watch them and like you watch them figure it out. And okay. then you, you, you slowly realize, okay, like this is obviously not, yeah. not as obvious as I, as I thought it was. So do user interviews. If you can't do them in, in person, um, yeah, do them over video call. Uh, but yeah, definitely user interviews on Zoom or in real life. Sort of as, as, as most personal as you can get, really. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot for that. Very, very insightful stuff. I'm sure that's probably quite useful to quite a few people looking for that sort of element of feedback in, in their product. Um, that brings us to the end for today. So a big thanks to Paul for your time and joining us in the virtual studio. It's been great chat with you and all the best with, with Recall. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for having me. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah, a bit of pleasure. So that's it from us for today. Best wishes to all the listeners as well. Um, take care and we'll see you all very shortly in the next episode. Goodbye.